What's going on photographers? Today we're talking about how to tell a story at a wedding. Let's go. Welcome to part two on how to tell a story on a wedding day. We finished up just after the ceremony. Now we're gonna talk about how to tell a story for the bridal party portraits and the reception. Let's go. When it comes to right after the ceremony, usually we do family portraits. Now, there's not much you can do with telling a unique story when it comes to this. It's pretty much straight. You take a nice level photo of all the family and you do it nice and quickly and you have fun. So we'll quickly do those and then we'll head outside with the oh, bridal side. 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 You can stand right there. So you can hold your one hand and look up to her while you're going down. <laughs> Alright Eric, you can hold her hand and walk into the center there with your other hand. Yeah, you know what's up. You kind of lead her in the way looking back. Alright, you can look back into her eyes, beautiful. Yeah, I'm ready. Alright, go for a hug right there. Go, go, go. <laughs> beautiful. Awesome, I want you to whisper something in her ear that's gonna make her giggle. It can be R rated, but you have to remember, you know, we got you mic'd up, and no, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> And then you can grab her chin and go in for a kiss. Another great way to change up your shots and tell a better story is to change your elevation of your camera, whether that's you going up in a tree, which you probably don't want to do in front of clients, or simply getting a drone. Now drones are awesome. Now just make sure you use them safely in good locations. Uh, never do it downtown, never do it in a busy area. Um, usually I only do it for about a two minute flight tops. I get a quick shot of them walking and then I get a couple of quick B-roll shots of the town I'm in or any detail shots of that and then I fly it down quickly. But if you're gonna be doing this for weddings, make sure you have the proper insurance and all that fun stuff. Walking. But it's great to tell a story. All right, photographers, so we just wrapped up the bridal session. Uh, we first did bridal portraits with the bride and groom and all their bridal party. We did that nice and quick because it's really cold out and we spent more time taking portraits of them, just them two. So when it comes to taking portraits of just them two, get talking to them. Don't just tell them to stand there and do nothing. It's really boring. So I always ask them like, hey, like, what did you first think when you got down on one knee, kind of like a little emotioning questions. And you always read them as a couple. If you think that they'd prefer a little more like uh, R-rated jokes, then go for that. If they're a little more uh, like laid back, go for that. Um, get them moving too, especially because it's cold. I got her like spinning around in her dress, which is always a lot of cool, uh, really cool shots that way. Uh, when it came to the sun, always get really cool sun flares coming in. Uh, focus on their face with when the sun is behind their head. And then once you're focused on their face, hold their focus and then move your camera up a tiny bit to get that cool sun flare. Because if you try to focus when the sun flare is still beaming behind their head, you can't focus on them that well unless you find a contrasting point. So that's one little tip for getting those photos. So we just wrapped up the session. We're gonna go enjoy the reception now and have a good time. So I hope you guys enjoyed the behind the scenes so far. Let's keep the day going. So they have eight round tables with eight people per table here tonight for all their guests to enjoy. They have beautiful centerpieces with little flowers around the center with a lot of emphasis on natural light, 
which is really special to their unique touch. So nice tip for you, Nigel, or whenever you're doing B-roll shots of like tables, never shoot like towards, like that's a boring background. Think about your background. If you put all those lights in the background, they're going to be bokeh in the background. So I'll show you. After I get detailed photos, then I'd like to take photos of all the candid natural moments that are happening. I don't like to give any direction at this point, I just like to be a fly on the wall, capturing any candid moments throughout the speeches, the parents, the families, from wide shots to up close. And then after comes the first dance. Now when it comes to the first dance, I'm always switching between photo and video like I am throughout the entire day. And what I like to do is, again, tell a meaningful story of shooting very wide, shooting very close, vertical, horizontal, trying to get the whole scene, and then also trying to find the parents to see if there's any emotional reactions there. Alright photographers, it is time for the night portraits. We are putting our couple on a balcony and we're triggering them with a Pocket Wizard Plus X. I suggest any Pocket Wizard, they're a really great brand and they're really reliable but you can also get third party brands too that do the job just well. When it comes to settings, right now I'm shooting at a hundredth of a second because the flash that's going off is going to freeze my couple. It's going to go so quickly and freeze my couple even if I'm holding at a lower slider speed, it's going to be sharp. I'm shooting at 3.2 because I want everything to be in focus. I could stop down to even F4 and I'll shoot at 3.2, F4, F5.6 so I have different options when I'm editing in post. But the best light I have is at 3.2. I'm also shooting at 3200 ISO which is pretty high but for a Nikon D750 it can really handle it with these conditions. When it comes to lighting these portraits too, you really want to make sure you have it right behind them. If you have it too high, you're gonna get these crazy sun flares, not sun flares, flash flares into your lens. And if you like that effect, cool, but I like it when it's a little more natural, even though it's pretty abrupt. A nice tip too, if you have two flashes, put one behind your subject and one facing kind of to the left of your subject. Here's your subject. One kind of facing to the left or straight on or on a curve, because then you get it's backlit and front lit. But since they're on a balcony for this photo that we're about to do, they won't be able to, we won't be able to front light them. So that's okay, we'll do that in the next wedding. Awesome. So I'm going to go across the street, kind of in front of auto parts, okay. and then you guys can stand right in front of the class. Okay. Right here. Yeah, we'll do that. Okay. Jeremy, do you want me with you? Yeah, I think so. Good call, Kira. Oh, that's amazing. Think you do one more? Hi, Kurt. <laughs> Thanks, man. I didn't get married. They did. Uh, but I'm having a good day. Thank you. No worries. Do you want me to keep doing it? Yeah, that'd be outstanding. Yeah. They've got an advanced right here, so... Alright, and then uh, you guys can start over there, and then you can walk down the sidewalk, and we're good. Yeah. photographers enjoyed this video and got some great insight when it comes to telling a story on a wedding day. I can't wait to see you in the next one and if you enjoyed any of the editing on these 
any of these photos, feel free to download the free preset. I made a 2018 starter preset pack to help you elevate your style as a photographer and craft your signature look. I'll see you in the next video. I'm Jeremy Daly. I hope you guys have a great one.